I didn't love football growing up. Mm -hmm. I didn't love football in high school. It was just an avenue. It was just something that I did. It was an avenue to get to college, mm -hmm. right? So I, I was just, it was just an avenue to get to where I needed to get to. And I just looked at it as, as that. Like, mm -hmm. what can I do to get to where I wanted? And this and football was that way. Um, I love football now. Mm -hmm. Well, it's when you get to the pros, you, you have to learn how to be a professional. What's best for my body? You know, what's best for me to grow, keep growing. And that helps because, you know, we're, we're creatures of habit. How do you keep, you know, find a good group of people to, to hang around with, to constantly inspire you? Um, that's definitely something I would tell myself, tell young, young kids now is look at who's around you. Are they on the same path as you? Are they on a different path or are they going the opposite direction? Where do you want to get to? Just surrounding yourself with guys who have the same goal as you is going to push you to be better. You guys are going to be competitive, pushing each other, and then eventually, hopefully, reaching that goal. Now, if you were able to go back and talk to, let's say, your younger self mm -hmm. in eighth grade or sophomore year, like what advice would you give your younger self? I mean, I would say. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of the Mind Connect podcast. Today, we have another great guest for you guys. So we have Chris Glazer from the New York Jets. So Chris is one of the best guys we've worked with. He is so funny, so energetic, and he actually have a lot of gem and knowledge to share with you guys. So Chris, welcome to the show, bro. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. So, all right, before we get started, let's give the listener a little bit of background of who you are, where you're from, obviously, yeah. Cleveland, Ohio, shout out to that, mm -hmm. right? So talk about how... Was it like growing up and how do you come across football, dude? Yeah. So I was born in Hawaii originally. Um, my dad was stationed out there in the Navy, met my mom there. She's from American Samoa. Um, you know, I didn't grow up playing sports. Uh, I wanted to, but you know, you know, my dad was always deployed and kind of wanted my dad to be there like for the sports. Um, so I just never got into it. And I found kind of, you know, my tracks within acting. Like I, I went to acting classes, I was doing plays, theater, all of that. And then eighth grade kind of shot up, you know, a little bit taller, a little bit lanky. I mean, I was called Marmaduke because I was <laughs> kind of coming into my body then. Um, and I started playing football, basketball, really baseball. Sucked at that, though. Uh, we won't talk about that. Um, moved to Ohio, where my dad's originally from. And... You know, I played football for that one year, eighth grade, and I sucked. I mean, I was the backup quarterback. The The first string got hurt, and it wasn't me. Like, they they didn't bring me up. They brought in, like, a, a wide receiver who played quarterback the year before. Like, I could just throw the ball far. Yeah. Like, that was it. No accuracy, no precision, nothing of the sort. And I think I played three snaps. All of them were runs. Just give it to the running back. Give it to the running back. Um, got to Ohio, and I was – didn't really want to play football. You know, I didn't, I wasn't successful in, in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. My dad had told me, you know, this football in Ohio is going to be a little bit harder, you know, obviously going to high school, things like that, but also just like the level is going to be harder. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, how am I going to play? Why should I even do this? If I barely play in Hawaii, how am I going to play here? And, you know, he just told me, give me a shot, I give it a shot. And that's what I did. Freshman year, got moved from quarterback to tight end, DN, linebacker, all this is all within like a day or two as well. Like they're just trying to fit me in what I could best, you know, fit. And it ended up just being on the line, block the dude in front of you. And that was it. And that was simple to me. And um, ever since then, like just really got more and more into sports, kind of like left the acting and the theater behind once I got to Ohio. But, you know, I played basketball, did track through shot put and discus. And I think it was my sophomore going into my sophomore year, uh, the, you know, how they have the message boards and things mm -hmm. like that. I had saw that it was going to be between me and my best friend for that starting role on varsity. And that kind of pushed me, drive me to, to go get it. Cause you know, me and him, like we're best friends, but we're also very competitive. Yeah. Like I, I want to be better than him. He wants to be better than me. And I ended up getting in that spot and started for three years. Um, first offer was from like Toledo. And then from there, you know, you just get one after another. And I ended up going to Virginia, great school, great academics. And now I'm here. Wow, man. That's, that's a lot to unpack. So like, talk me through about like, obviously you, it, with your childhood, like you, you, your dad deploy a lot and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. um, how does that influence you as far as like what you get to do on the field? Cause obviously 
having your dad there to watch you is something very special. Mm -hmm. So like how, how do you think that drive you a little bit when, when you get on the field, put the helmets on? You know, when, when I was a kid, I thought it was very important, um, that my dad see me do those, you know, athletic adventures. Um, just because he, you know, I see my dad as a tough guy, things like that. And I wanted him to see if I was living up to his image almost, you know, and that just pushed me to be faster, like stronger, like do all the right things. And, you know, he's military. My mom is Polynesian, mm -hmm. very tight ship ran at home, you know, rules, all, all the things like that. And, uh, you know, just sticking to that plan, um, and just falling in love with what I, what I'm doing. Yeah. And do you think that it. like your upbringing, like, especially ha like, obviously I, I grew up Asian house, mm -hmm. like, everything's super yep. tight. Uh, as I'm getting older, I feel like, wow, that was really cool. Cause mm -hmm. I actually have structure. Mm -hmm. So when I go in any place, I can adapt and just find my own way. So how does that carry it when it comes to like in the locker room and in, in, in football? Well, it's when you get to the pros, you, you have to learn how to be a professional. And that's something that even coming into my third year, I'm still learning, mm -hmm. you know, like what's best for my body, you know, what's best for me to grow, keep growing. And that helps because, you know, we're, we're creatures of habit mm -hmm. and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if I don't do the things that I need to do, then I'm not going to perform my best. Um, what, and that's not always lifting or running, you know, all those things are important, but it's also like how to get away from football when you need to be, how to be, all the way present when you're there. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that learning as I'm coming up, like it's it's detrimental. You have to do that because when you're in football, you need to be focused. And my dad, I've always been a jokester. Mm -hmm. And my dad has always told me like, there's a time and place. And I remember that to this day because, you know, as a kid, you kind of get overzealous and you, mm -hmm. you joke more than you should. And uh, there comes a point where you just have to put that away. And that's what you have to learn, you know? And I think it helps so much now just being structured because I mean, wake up, I do the same thing every day, wake up, walk my dog, go in the facility, do my treatment, eat breakfast, you know, and it's just that every day. And when you have that, it's normalcy. And when you get away from it for too long, then, you know, you can feel out of whack or whatever. So walk me through like your first time leaving home, going to college. What was that like? Uh, I thought it was great. <laughs> you know, you, you probably get it. Like it's a strict household. Um, there's rules in place and you, you find that, oh, it's just me now. You know, like how do I function without those leader roles, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and that can be tricky for everybody. I mean, whether you have strict or not, I feel that you can get away and be all into yourself instead of what's best for me in this moment mm -hmm. instead of, oh, I just want to have fun, yeah. you know? So that's a learning curve for everybody. But for me, I feel like it came a little bit more natural just mm -hmm. because you kind of always have that, that inner voice. And it's always like your parents, like, oh, what would my parents do? Mm -hmm. Would they be proud of this? Would, would they approve of this? And you go from there. I think that's good, man. And what about like circle friends, right? You're, you're your best friend. You, you guys were competing. Against you. How do you keep, you know, find a good group of people to, to hang around with, to constantly inspire you. Because yeah. some of the kids that we work with, obviously grew up in a, in a city and mm -hmm. or they might have some bad influence. Like how do you get away from that? It's just, it's finding common goals at the end of the day. It's all right. This guy wants to go to college for this sport or that sport. I think I'm going to go hang out with them a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's not saying you can't hang out with those bad friends. It's just, maybe you should dial it back a little bit, you know? Um, it's just influences, right? So if this kid is always gonna be doing such and such, then I'm gonna start doing that, right? Mm -hmm. So like surrounding yourself with guys who have the same goal as you is gonna push you to be better. You guys are gonna be competitive pushing each other and then eventually hopefully reaching that goal. Yeah, no, I think that's, that's a good approach. I think in a team-based setting from what I've seen is that People who play team sport mm -hmm. tend to understand what it's like to be considerate of other people. Mm -hmm. When you are like playing individual sport, it's just you. It's only and you. just you. Yeah. Right. So now, obviously, you pick up you know football a little bit later, mm -hmm. and you have to, you you've been moving different position. How do you adapt to different learning curve and different position, and how do you solidify and continue to to grow as a mm -hmm. professional athlete? I think you just have to have an open mind. I mean, there's nothing that you can't learn. Um, 
going from quarterback, all I knew was how to throw a ball far. Then it's how do I catch a ball? How do I, you know, do th- other things and how do I block? I mean, my first year ever playing O-line, I think I pass set it every single play, whether it was run or, run or pass. I think it was blocked at the end the entire time. And that's all. And like in the moment, that's good. And then, you know, you just keep growing and growing. And yeah, I think that you just have to keep an open mind because like those little things that you learn, so, something's going to hit for you. Mm-hmm. It, it might, so, One coach might not say something that it hits your brain, but somebody eventually will. And when that does, like, that's how you just keep growing. What was, what was a good moment for you where you realized like, Hey, this is a different intensity, especially in college to professional. Mm-hmm. Like, and what, what made you realize that a, cause obviously there's a talent gap, right? Mm-hmm. When, when you go in there as a freshman in, in college, mm-hmm. there's guys who are older than you to have been doing longer than you. How do you assess where you are and how do you make sure that doesn't discourage you? I think you just have to know where you're at, mm-hmm. right? Like, like you said, at, coming in as a freshman, like you're going to be, you know, you came from being a senior at high school, you're the top dog. And then you're like, all right, I'm back to square one. And I think you just have to accept that. All right, I'm back to square one. I'm learning everything as much as I possibly can. And you just go from there. You know, uh, when I first got to college, it was these guys are ahead of you. You're going to be dressed, but you're not playing. You know, you're going to be red shirting. And then it came to a point where guys got hurt and you're just thrown into the fire. And it's what have you been? And then that's really where like all your work comes into culmination. Right. It's like, all right, all these games that you haven't been playing. Are you paying attention? Are you learning? And that's your that's your op. Right. Mm-hmm. That's your opportunity. And when those comes, like you have to be ready. And that's why that learning is just so important and, and growing with your team, learning where you're at. And honestly, it's not even, it's more of knowing where you're at so that you can perform better. Mm-hmm. It's like, all right, well, I'm not, I think I played at 270 my freshman year. I wasn't going to be the ground pound, throw guys out of the bar, but I was fast. Mm-hmm. So like, you have to know that about yourself so you can play better. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to get myself into positions where I cannot use my speed. Obviously there are moments where you have to be strong. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that my, my strong suit, my capabilities is speed. So I'm going to use that. And wow. yeah, I mean, that's, that's great, man. Um, your first game, <laughs> your first game starting, like walk, walk me through, especially in, in college. Like, what was that like? Yeah. So we were playing Pittsburgh away and our right tackle went down and my coach, this is mind you, like I'm 270. I'm trying everything I can to get to 300. Mm. Um, so I'm eating, you know, as much as I think I was up to like six, 7,000 calories a day. Wow. Um, and on those away trips, you normally get good food. Yeah. You know, so like I'm in the hotel, I'm eating the steak, the ice cream, anything to gain this weight. I'm not warm. And my coach is like, get ready, like warm up. And that's that's the shock. That's the shock. You're like, all right, I got to get ready for this. Um, I didn't end up playing in that game. But the next game, he's like, you're definitely going to go in. So you, you get your mind right. And there's always that thought of you can be confident, but I think there's in every bit, everybody's mind is like, can I do this? Mm -hmm. You know, because you don't know. You've never been in that position. And then once I got in that role, like I was nervous and then you kind of get that first good hit in, whether it's someone knocking you or you're knocking somebody, you feel like, oh, this is just this is just ball. At the end of the day, it's just ball. And that's kind of how the NFL was, too. You're like, oh, I don't know if I can do it. I think I can. Mm -hmm. I'm confident that I can. But you don't really know. And then you finally just, you kind of ease into the game. You just realize, oh, this is a game that I've been playing my entire life. Mm -hmm. There's nothing, I mean, obviously players are better, but it's nothing special. Mm -hmm. It's just go out there and play ball. How do you adapt to the the change in intensity and speed and stay calm throughout those kind of, you know, big moments? (laughs) Honestly, it's a, a good support system. It's having good guys in the locker room of like, hey, I saw you doing this. Maybe you should try this. And then being open to that, being like, all right, I'm going to try that next time. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, you try something new mm-hmm. or you just keep going. You know, I think that support system within the team. And I think that's kind of loose back to what you're saying about team sports is we all get it. Mm-hmm. We all get how hard of a game this is. Uh, and we're going to help each other, especially in O-line. I mean, we're the only group in there that if one person fails, we all fail. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no other group in there like that. So we just stick together, band together and, you know, we'll figure it out. Yeah. And I always talk like every time I, I, I talk to any football players, like I always mention, like you have to have a short term memory. Yeah, right? absolutely. Because, so how do you 
cultivate it? Were you always like that? Because I, I would assume that being a theater kid growing <laughs> up got to help at some point because you, yeah. you are in front of audience yep. all the time. You have to know the script. You got to know mm -hmm. the line. And if you mess up, you have to go back. You mm -hmm. can't just be like, oh, my bad. And yep. then not kept going, right? So like, how did that, do you think theater influenced you in some way when it comes to? I think maybe, I don't really know, but I think the the part of improv mm -hmm. of like, oh, if you don't know, fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. Like make go to something that you do know and then make that work. Like in, in football, like I, I know I can do these things really well. So if I'm going to try something new, if it doesn't work, I'm going to just go right back until I can re retry something else. So yeah. How do you start building that, you know, toolkit mm -hmm. of what you know? Because again, young athletes are listening to this. Mm -hmm. Some of them just is not, they don't have body awareness. Yet, yeah. Right. But as you're, again, you say you shot up at one point, how do you start coming to your own body and then figure out like, all right, this is what I'm really good at. And I'm going to use this. I think it's like anything with, you just have to try it. You know, it's, you won't know until you know, mm -hmm. and you know, like, oh, how far can I jump? Well, test that out. If it's not to where you want it, keep working on it, you mm -hmm. know, and you, you're just going to have to find it on your own. Mm -hmm. There's, I mean, I remember as a kid, people telling me the, all cliches, this cliche, that, and then you get to the stage and you're like, oh, those actually are true. <laughs> you know, you, as those kids, you don't you want to listen to it because it sounds so cliche, but it's like, what, I just got to- What were those cliche? Trust the process. I think that is something that every kid has heard. Trust mm -hmm. the process. And it's hard, you know, especially like getting injured. Mm. Um, you think, oh, my world's ending. But it's just just trust it. Trust what people like you or PTs or coaches like they've all seen this before. Right. Mm -hmm. So just trust that they know how it's how you're going to get over it, like how the the time, things like that. So it's just trusting those people that are in your life that have seen this before. Mm -hmm. Do you have any key moment in, in your career where you kind of had a big growth? And mm -hmm. what were some of those um, factors that drove you to those growth? Um, so my, I think my biggest growth was my parents in high school. Mm -hmm. um, after my sophomore year, they kind of told me, you know, if, if you want to go to college, like you kind of have to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. We're not going to be able to help you out. So that was kind of the motivator of, all right, I got to figure it out. I got to do what I got to do to get to that next level. Like, I didn't love football growing up. Mm -hmm. I didn't love football in high school. It was just an avenue. It was just something that I did. It was an avenue to get to college, right? Mm -hmm. And then in college, like I, I'd say even then, I didn't love the – like I wouldn't go just watch football, you mm -hmm. know? Um, so I, I was just – it was just an avenue to get to where I needed to get to, and I just looked at it as that. Like mm -hmm. what can I do to get to where I wanted? And this – and football was that way. Um, I love football now. I'll say that. I think that's another time where – you know, last year I got cut mm -hmm. and I started watching football. And I'm like, man, I really do love this game. Like, I don't want this to just leave. Mm -hmm. I don't want to just be done with it. And so I fell back in love with the game and came back, played a little bit. So that was another big moment for me. Yeah. So how do you deal with that setback, man? Like getting cut, obviously we work with a, bu a bunch of pro guys mm -hmm. and getting cut is part of the process. So yep. how do you handle that adversity? Kind of like what you said, the goldfish mindset, you know. It is what it is. Like at the end of the day, the NFL is a business, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, you're not taking things to heart. Yeah, it sucks. I mean, the first time I ever got cut, I was crying. You know, I was trying to hold it back and then I ended up just tearing up. It's like, oh, this was my opportunity. Now it's gone. Mm -hmm. I messed it up. But it's just like, wait, it's patience. Um, it's do everything you possibly can do so when that opportunity does arrive that you, you're ready. Because mm -hmm. um, like those opportunities will come and they did obviously for me and I was ready for those moments and now I'm here. Like, it's just, you have to be patient and you have to work until you get that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were able to go back and talk to, let's say your younger self mm -hmm. in eighth grade or sophomore year, like what advice would you give your younger self? I mean, I would say kind of what we talked about, the friends part. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy to get wrapped up into a lot of silly things. Um, and I would just say like, if you go with on this path, then this is this is your endpoint. And something I learned in college was if you show me your five friends, I'll show you your future. That's what mm -hmm. one of my coaches told me. And I think that holds true. You know, um, that's definitely something I would tell myself, tell young young kids now is look at who's around you. Are they on the same path as you? Are they on a different path or are they going the opposite direction? Mm -hmm. And it's which way do you want to go? 
you know, what's your goal? And I think that at the end of the day, like, that's what it is. What's your goal? What's your mindset? Where do you want to get to? And you have to surround yourself with people like that. You have to see people achieving those things or working towards that same goal so that you know, this is what I have to do, or I can't do it that way. We need to do it some other way, you know? So. Dude, what I love about working with you is that you have like great humor about you. <laughs> yeah. And I think you also know how to have a good time yeah. and be professional at the same time. Mm -hmm. How do you toe that balance? I mean, it's, it's not easy. You know, um, you can feel tension sometimes. And my way is like, let's just laugh. Like, let's have mm -hmm. a good time. And I think that has to deal with like my family background, um, who we are as a people, you know, and it's, you come here to do your work, but at the same, like, if you're, if you don't have fun working, then what's the point? Mm -hmm. You know, obviously there are not going to be fun times, but you have to find the fun moments, you know, the funny moments within everything and keep things lighthearted. You know, it's, you only get one life. Why be mad all the time? Yeah. There's no point. <laughs> Such wise words. I love it. Dude, it's it's so crazy because I, I would go home and like, we'll have long mm -hmm. days and all that stuff. But then I never look at it and be like, man, that was, I'd say it's a grind, but I did have fun doing it. Yeah. I mean, we had, I mean, my, look, I, my college, we were worked. All right. We, we came in, we weren't giving gear. You had to earn everything, which I love, mm -hmm. love that from my coach. Not all the time, but uh, you know, it, it's setting guidelines and setting principles. And it's, we, I think we were given a Hanes white t-shirt, black athletic shorts with no brand on it, r regular uh, white cotton, you know, socks. Like you had to earn everything that you wanted. Um, and we would be dog tired after every practice or every workout. And it's just like, you look at each other and yeah, we're all on the floor spread out you know, trying to catch our breath, but it's like, wow, we all just did that. Mm -hmm. Like it's, you're achieving something you didn't know you could do. And I think that's, that's like the small things. Those are the small things I always remember, mm -hmm. you know? What I, I love that you keep saying like the word earn it, right? Cause I, I, I kept saying this to, to the younger athlete we get to work with is that, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's two types of people in this world. There's people who show up and then they put their hands out and say, Hey, give me yeah. what you got. And there's people who earn through it. Yeah. Right. So as you move through life and where you are in your career, mm -hmm. um, how does that earn it mentality has has served you thus far? Because I want to push that more. Oh, man. I mean, not everything is handed to you. You know, it wasn't certainly for me. I mean, I earned a scholarship. Uh, you know, I had to go to all these different camps, things like that. And then especially the NFL, my last year in college, I was like, dude, do I, I didn't get the honors I thought I was going to get. Mm -hmm. And I had my coach up. I'm like, should I even try? You know, like, is it even a possibility? Mm -hmm. And he told me, dude, why not? Why not try? Because mm -hmm. then if you don't, if you never try, you'll never know. Um, and so it's just like you you're not going to get handed to everything. There's going to be a point in your life where you want something. You're not just going to be able to get it. You're not going to have it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, all right, what do I have to do to get that? Um, it's hard. It's certainly not easy. Yeah. There are days where you go home and you're laying in bed and you're just like, God, can I do it tomorrow? And you just got to wake up the next day and just go do it, you know, regardless of how you feel. Mm -hmm. And that's just the mindset of I'll do what it takes. Yeah. When did it become real to you, man, that you can actually play in the league? Man, I think it wasn't until this year. I mean, I, I played last year for the first time ever. And kind of like what I said, like you have those thoughts of, man, can I do it? Mm -hmm. um, and then you finally get in the game and you just realize it's just ball. At the end of the day, it's, yeah, the competition is a lot harder. The guys are a lot bigger, a lot stronger, a lot faster than what I have seen. But I know what I'm doing. And you just have to be confident in what, you, what I know, um, what I have done, and that know that you will get better. Like, not every play is going to be perfect. Certainly not what I did was perfect every time. But I knew that from each game, I'm going to learn from my mistake. And I'm going to get better at that. Yeah, bro. I think it's so real of you to say, like, yeah, I just – feel like that right now because most of the time yeah. when we when we do a podcast with the guys they usually say oh i you know i i realized this like junior year in college and all mm -hmm. that stuff you're like nope right now no. <laughs> yeah like i mean it's different for everybody right like some guys have that confidence i'm i feel like i'm very realistic like mm -hmm. it could not go my way <laughs> like that's a very strong possibility that it could not go my way i hope it does and i'm going to do everything i can to make sure the outcome is mine but Dude, there's there's just so many different people in this world like there's so many factors like you can only control yourself at the end of the day so like why would i worry about other things
Yeah. So last question. Um, mm-hmm. How do you keep showing up as a professional athlete? Because being a professional athlete, obviously people think like, yeah, you, you pray for a professional team, but you do have to show up and carry yourself differently. Mm-hmm. So how, how do you manage that? It's, it's kind of like your why, you know, it's another cliche. What's your why? But you have to know what it is or like, what else? Why are you doing it? You know, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be, oh, I want to do it because I want the girls. I want the money. You know, I, I do it for my family. Whatever it is that you do it for, you need to be thinking about that 24 seven. Because as soon as you don't have a why, you're done. You're not going to go out and have that same energy, that same juice, you know, the same want to to get better. So having a why is just so important and actually thinking about it or write it down. Or I mean, I write my stuff down every day. Mm. because I, I wouldn't say I'm like that with every phase of my life, but I think it's important for me to actually see what it is instead of just thinking about it. Cause like when I, I feel like when I write things down, they're set in stone. Like that's what I have to do. I love that. What, what is your why? I mean, it's my family. I have a dog. Um, I try to give, I mean, look, I got him a gold chain before <laughs> I even have one. All right. Like there, you just, I want to see other people happy. And mm. I think that's like, I know my parents, find joy in me playing football for the Jets, um, see me enjoy my time. So mm-hmm. I just try to enjoy every moment for them, for my sisters and my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love that. I, the The one book right behind you is, is Think and Go Rich. And one of the biggest thing I've learned from that book, and I read it numerous times, is mm-hmm. write down your concrete girl. Yeah. Like set it in, in, in stone, like you mm-hmm. say. when Because when you write something, because people verbalize stuff all the time, right? Yeah. How many how many people do you know that say they're gonna do a certain thing and, and like, they don't ever do it? Yeah, yeah. Once you write it and you like affirm it to yourself, mm-hmm. like then you're you're truly set all the action to align with that. And it feels like you have to do it. Like mm-hmm. if I, that's how I feel. Like if I write it down, it's like all right, this is my priority and this is what I'm gonna do. Kind of like my house chores, right? Like I get home, I don't want to do the dishes. I don't want to you know go clean up my room, but like it's those things I have to do it. So I'm gonna write it down. You know, and I'm going to get to those things to make sure that tomorrow's better. Mm-hmm. And that's that's kind of what it is. Like, what what can I do today so that tomorrow is better? Yeah. I, I love this one thing um, during the Knicks playoff. Like, Josh Hart just said, like, at the end of the day, we're just playing basketball. There's yep. guys working from, like, 6 a.m. to, like, 9 p.m. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to work at a desk job. I mean, going out, hanging out with my, my boys every day, playing a game that I love, it, it can't get any better than that. So why – because I feel bad, like my body hurts. I'm going to go in there and be all, you know, gloomy and stuff. I, I saw the other day, like, don't be the teammate that people hate going to play with every day. You know, oh, like yeah. you don't want to be the teammate that makes practice bad. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to do that because practice is already bad. Coaches are already making it hard on us. Why are we going to do that to each other? You know? Mm-hmm. So. Dude, last question. Um, what's the one saying that you love that you say to yourself? multiple times, especially when, when, when things do not go well. It is what it is. I say that every day. Something doesn't go my way. It do, It is what it is. How do I go from here? It's, it's not what happened. It's what I'm going to do next. And I've always thought about that. It is what it is. Dude. Awesome, man. Let's, <laughs> let's just end with that. Chris, I appreciate you. I time, appreciate bro. being on here. This is great, bro. Thank you so much. And again, excited to see what you're going to do this season. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Let's go.